We're going to take a look at a 1967 4107. This is Russell's bus. I used to have one of these. Uh, he's got uh, a roof raise on this. How, how tall is your roof? Eight inches. Eight inch raise. So Russell's a pretty tall guy. He's just standing there no problem. <laughs> He's done a lot of interesting stuff in this bus. A lot of interesting stuff. Of course, a work in progress. Check out these windows. Floor to ceiling with the blinds inside. Very nice. Very unique. Now you've got, you've got solar and lithium on this bus, correct? That's correct. Yep. Yep. So there's definitely want to see that. 1200 watts on the roof. Want to see your lithium batteries. Can we talk a bit about your control panel over here and these sure. uh, unique switches that you sure. have? I think we might need to close the blind for that to show up properly. Which one do we got there? This one. Are your screens on? There they are. So, so this is the uh, uh, across is 220 volt, obviously, 50 amp services, and it just so 60 cycles, and then the the wattage and then the voltage. So you got 109 volts, 19 volts, and 120 volts. So this is a 110 volt circuit. It's 110 volt. You combine them both. It's two 240 volt. Um, it shows the current um, amperage and then the kilowatt hours, like you get a uh, bill from the power company, and then your power factor, which always should be close to unity, which is one. Nice. And these have alarms set on them too, so you can actually set the wattage and say if it goes over so much, they start flashing. And then you know that it's over currented or over voltaged. And then these buttons are kind of unique. They turn on the lights. This is the front of the bus, the middle of the bus, and the back of the bus, uh, just for uh, kitchen, the front, and they are a momentary button. You just push it one time, and it turns on a relay down in the bay in the bottom and turns the lights on for this room. And the little red circle tells you that that light's on, on or off. Anyway, those are nice. really cool, and he's got those around the bus to be able to control the lights from anywhere. Yeah, there's 10 switches in the back, there will be 10 in the front, and then these three are just to get you through the passageway in case you need to turn the light on so you can see it. Of course, uh, the inverter downstairs is here. This is the voltage off the engine batteries that start the engine. And that, that little voltmeter here on the floor, you're probably going to go slower than I'm talking. This is the volt, and I don't have this, is kind of a work in progress. I just started it. This is um, a voltmeter that's charging the lithiums. And this little charge light comes on when it's, when it's charging. So it's topped off. It's 0 0.7 amps going to the battery. So it's just keeping them topped off. Uh, so the lithiums are charged by solar. Uh, they're underneath the floor here. And then this little button turns on another little box downstairs so it takes my lithiums and will charge the house batteries or not the house but the crank uh, the engine batteries if i want it to oh cool so so did it just bond the battery bank together then? it does okay. it does so if i push it the light comes on and there's a little fan that just turned on below it because uh, um, it's drawing some juice drawing some power and it has <laughs> to keep the electronics cool and it's now charging the lead acid batteries from the lithiums. So if I'm boondocking, I'm somewhere out in the middle of nowhere and the lithiums are full, and for some reason my uh, start batteries are low, I can push this and it charges them up. It has a three stage charger in it. So is See how it going off? I went back to charge because I was using current. See how I went? that light came on? Yeah. So if I push the button, it discharges. It's discharging now at 14 amps. 
it's charging my house batteries, or not my house, but my start batteries, and I take the button off, it goes back to charge, because I use some of that lithium power. Are you using, it's not just simply bonding the batteries together, then you you have a separate charger. Yes. Is it, are you using a solar controller for that? Uh, no, this is the solar controller, and it's charging the lithiums. That's all its job is, is uh -huh. to charge the lithiums. So that you have a separate charger for those that runs off the lithiums. Yep, there's another box, and that box runs off the lithiums, and if I press this button, it turns it on, and then looks at the voltage on the lead acid batteries and say, oh, you're a little bit lower than I want you to be, and it'll start charging them. So I saw an interesting use of a solar charge controller to charge lead acid batteries, because it's that, gonna accept, that. it's, it's, it's that. a DC to DC converter, yeah. you know, and essentially yeah. you could just use another one of these hundred dollar, you know, yes. to do a three stage charge on a lead acid, which I thought was pretty cool. So this one's wireless too, did you know that? This one no, I did not. This one has Wi-Fi. It's pretty nice little Wi-Fi too. So you have to get onto its service to do it. So this is a, you're recording, right? Yep. So this is a solar controller and I've got 48 volts going into this and then, and then the lithiums are 14 volts basically. And so there's the power coming from the solar panels and that's the battery voltage and that's the solar watts. So there's 248 watts being used right now from this, what's available of what it needs to charge the batteries. And I'm using 16.6 amps to charge the batteries. Oh, that's ones. cool. And then you can actually go into parameters and change things in here. It's been a while since I've done this, but you can actually go in and tell it, you can actually say, I want you to be at this voltage and this voltage and what type of batteries you have. And so it looks like it's a 40 amp uh, uh, solar panel controller. And it doesn't turn, it turns off at 11 volts. So when the battery gets down to 11 volts, it shuts off and it turns back on at 13 volts. That's what this is. This cool. Let's see, did you get this off of Amazon or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sky blue. Yeah, make sky blue. And there's one that looks just like it that actually is a little prettier, but it's a knockoff of this one. And they say that this is, Many people that have installed these have had problems with the other ones, and that mm. this is the, this is the better unit. So, I did what they said because it sounded legit. You know, sometimes people do that to, to 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 push people onto another product, but this one isn't quite as pretty, but it uh, it's got better reviews. Inside, this one looks much nicer than the other one torn apart. You actually made your own lithium batteries too, right? I did. I did. So I would definitely want to check those out. Sure. There's an area of interest to a lot of people, Shh. myself included. Sure. Yeah. Chair. Everybody loves the chair. Oh, well, the way they love the windows the most. Everybody loves the windows. The second thing they like is the chair. So this chair, I in a bus, you're limited on space, and every square inch helps. And it's not like a house where it's square footage, but in the, in the boss, I think I feel like it's an inch. So this chair is made so you can look out the windshield. And there's a little step here you can put down for a place to put your feet. So you can stand on this, sit on the chair, look out the windshield, and um, it's it's pretty intimidating because the windshield's right there and you're you're on top. But it is what it is. It is all the way down right now, but it does raise up. And it also turns. So these buttons are the same buttons I've used all over the coach. And this is a raise button. And then this button will spin the chair. So I don't get a hit by it. <laughs> it's so now, amazing how fast that is. So now it's a living room chair. And you can sit in it for the living room. And originally that couch was going to be on this side, but I like it on this side better because of the TV. So. So the mechanism you use to do that is? So the bottom piece is a log splitter ram, but the log splitter ram doesn't turn, it's stationary. And I put a little rod next to it right here that slides inside of itself to go up and down, but that's what keeps it from turning. And then there's a motor here with a gearbox that's uh, for a screw jack. And that's what turns the top piece. This is the hard piece for, for people to find and get. And it's an indexing, it's an indexing tool for a mill, for a milling machine.
Oh, really? So you use it to cut gears. So you turn it so many degrees and it would turn. Yeah, you have an you index. Cut a degree, you, cut it, you cut it and then you turn it again. You cut it until you get all the way around your gears. It's an indexing tool. So is it a CNC indexing head then? No, it's it, originally Just a this is an old manual one. Because yeah. they have the pegs that drop in the yep. holes as you go exactly. around. Exactly. So I how are you? all that and I put a motor on it. I don't need the index. I just need this shaft that goes yeah. there. I have a couple of indexing heads at home, but I'm not about to cannibalize them for that. <laughs> and then it uh, goes down by weight. I had to get on it to go down. And I could make it go down with power, but I elected not to because the grandkids, if they have their heads under there, like a watermelon, it's going to pop ahead. So yeah. I made it to where the body weight is what pushes this down. So it's just a hydraulic pump that goes up and down and an electric motor to make it spin around. That's really cool. It is cool. The grandkids wear it out. It has a clutch in it. So if it's jammed by something, it stops. So it has a clutch that releases so it doesn't burn the motor up or the gears up or anything like that. It's got two little ball bearings and they pop out and go back in the holes as it spins around. That's that noise you hear. And most screw jacks have those, not a lot of them, but some do. So this is a close-up of the indexing head. If any of you are familiar with uh, an indexing head on a milling machine, there's a, a, hand, a, a hand crank on the side of it, and that's been taken off, and there's a motor here, and he's using the, the ring gear and the input there to, to make the chair spin. So Russell's, Russell's insulated this bus pretty heavily. And um, so any place there's, a, I used a two part foam, part A, part B. You mix them together as a chemical reaction. Unlike the right stuff or the stuff that you buy in a can, it's activated by air. This is uh, activated by chemical reaction. And there's two parts to it. You get a five gallon bucket, cost you, I don't know, 600, 700 bucks for two buckets. And it's supposed to do a 40 foot by 40 foot by 40 foot block of foam two five gallon buckets wow it doesn't do that much because i went through two buckets and i didn't use near that much so temperature and freshness of what you purchase makes a big difference the hotter it is the more it expands the colder it is the less it expands but it'll come out any sliver any hole anything you have so what i would do is i put a, a tub and i put a ziploc bag in the tub and I'd fold the Ziploc bag over the tub and I'd take the five gallon bucket and I'd pour one pound of part A and one pound of part B and I'd zip it shut and you have about 30 seconds to knead it, to squish it around and then I would throw it behind the walls. So in the bag? In the bag. <laughs> and I'd throw it there and it'd drop to the bottom and I'd hurry with the drill motor as fast as I could and start screwing all my screws and they were already pre-started. So I just laid it back, threw it in the wall and started putting the uh, screwing uh, the paneling up. Yep, screwing it on. And when that bag pops, you can hear it. It goes pop, and then it start. You know, it's starting to fill that cavity up. And if you bring your camera over here, you can see where it came out the top here, and it dripped down past this, down to here, down to here, and down to here. Any little hole at all, it will fill it up and come out. But so you can tell being in this space that it is really sound. It's really, and it's really rigid because it adds to the strength of the entire bus. So this is all quarter inch shot plywood and the top and everything else else is aluminum. And you can see, if you look right here with your camera, you can see how thick the walls are. That's the outside and this is the inside. So it's almost a full two before, four inches deep. And these walls are straight. They're not rounded like the bus is. Super thick super uh super insulated. insulated super efficient just like a coleman cooler yeah yeah so do you want to show us the uh the kids room access sure i should open the basement up so you can see it well we oh, can take a peek open. at it oh it is open so there's, so there's a, ladder. a ladder it goes down there and the bay door outside of the bus is open right now and there's a cute little carpet down there with little characters on it um Really nice cooktop here. Yeah, my wife wants this in the house. Whoops. Um, and uh, it's uh, there's a safety lock I'm turning on right now. That little red light means don't, don't, don't let turn any on. buttons work. 
Uh, when the power goes out and the power goes back on, the safety lock is not on. You have to turn it on. It's just an electric but, range, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, 220 volt. So this is the only thing that has to have the generator running for. My inverter won't power this. It'll power a 1,000 watt. These, each one of these is about 1,000 watts. And it'll power one of them for a while. Uh -huh. But the generator I can run them all. Yeah. And the air conditioner, of course. Just a regular old tele, regular old refrigerator. Nothing special. Uh, Lowell's seven cubic foot. No big deal. Household fridge, yep. Yep. And you can see the outside got some of that foam stuff on it. When it, I was doing this in here, it exploded. It popped down the shop plywood and that foam just spit all over everything. And I've got to either replace this fridge. Really or hard to clean that. that stuff up. If yeah, it, it gets is. on anything. It is. It's crazy. Uh, full size shower um, like a home shower smallest you could find to not take up too much room um, two I don't know what you call these twin beds or double beds what do they call them I thought the uh, the kids bed up there was pretty yeah, interesting so this is two drawer guides back to back so the drawer guides and, and I, I put them back to back for strength so you can stand, get on them and um, then this comes down just to fold down on that. We store sleeping bags up there. And this is where my daughter was going to sleep, but she doesn't anymore. They too big. They she like the basement. The basement. <laughs> yeah. When they get older, they don't want to be around mom and dad no more. That's right. They don't. And the throne room, I can show yeah. that real quick here. Yeah. Please do. And your master console down here for your light switches. Yeah, so there's some lights here, and each one of these goes to something. Um, anyway, the, these are all lights up to here. These two are spares right now. Uh, a house water and a hot water circulator. So I have, I have hot water right at the tap on every one of my faucets. If you turn the hot water on, the water's already there and it's already hot. Because I have a little circulating pump that goes through every single faucet like a hotel yeah yeah so my shower <laughs> if you turn the hot water on it's already there it's instant you turn the bathroom hot on for the sink it's on kitchen it's on so you're not wasting any water you'll get about just enough from the stem up and after that you got to be careful because it's hot so you you just turn that circulating pump on when you're planning on using the water you don't necessarily I leave it on all the time oh you do yeah it's a little solar powered uh, and, and it, it's 12 volt so it, it but it's meant for the solar industry you know when they put those tubes on top of a house and they run hot water through it yeah it's meant to go through really slow to get hot so when it comes back down and that's what I use because it's low current low GPM so I'm not wearing my pipes out and it's like a it's like a half a gallon a minute or something like that. It's really, really slow. So it's very slowly just going through all the time and it's very low current. And you have an electric hot water heater then? Or? I do, currently, okay. currently. So now we'll when plug I say in. currently, I have four sources for hot water. I have the electric water heater. I have a, a diesel fired boiler that runs diesel and will heat, heat it, but I also can use it to heat the engine also use it to heat the generator before I start them up so they're already preheated okay. or I can heat the domestic hot water up also that same circuit I can that I've got it to where it circulate circulates you there and then I can use the engine heat if I'm driving down the road I can use the generator heat if I'm stationary or the shore power which I'm using right now right on 110 so I have four sources for hot water and to heat the bus all, all four of those will also heat the bus. So we'll want to see that when we check out the bays. That sounds pretty sure, cool. Sure, sure. And then yeah, down below this bed here, there's a there's a radiator with a fan on it. So that's for the air conditioning back here and also for the heat. So I use the same circuits, the same water circuits or the same hydraulics or what do you want to call it? The glycoline, the antifreeze for all of my heating and all my cooling. So I don't have separate systems. It's all one system that either heats or either cools. Well, we definitely need to understand how you did that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the kid's room downstairs. He's got this cute little carpet that we put up for him. They love it down here and the little foam. 
little chairs, and then up here is how they get in and out. And yep. what happens is this door ends up just down here the whole trip, and this hole is open the whole time because they're going up and down. And the little motorcycle probably just fits right in one yeah. of your massive bays here. I just put it in there on the top of that tarp. The little Honda 70. Yeah. The Buffalo's got huge bays. Let me get a video of that if you want. So this is your relays. Yeah, these are the relays. And uh, what happens is when you push the button up on top, this if you look at the back here, there's a little rocker switch. When you push it, it turns it off. Do it again, it turns it on. And every time this pushes in, it changes state. And that's what those buttons do. So there's one, two, there's eight of them. And this is what they're all controlling. Bathroom lights, bedroom lights, shower lights, kitchen lights, living room lights, rear air conditioning, fresh water, circulating pump, and the fresh water pump. And I have another box to put some more in. I just haven't got to it yet. Yeah, that's really cool. And there's fusing for each circuit. Are those uh, tall ones? Are those breakers? Yeah, they'll. once they've seen a load, they'll kick back in. So they cycle. They're thermal activated. Just like the ones on the coach. You've seen those little square brick ones. And when yep. they're hot, they disconnect and then they reconnect. That's what those do. So, I don't know that I like them, but I had them and I stuck them in there. Massive storage in a buffalo. Fresh water, gray water, 100 gallons of fresh, and about 100 gallons of gray, and about a, uh, the same in the, in the black water. Yeah, I just found some old tanks and stuff in there. It's an AV71. Four speed. Four speed, the engine sits on an angle, on a 45 degrees, this is one valve cover, that's the other valve cover on the top. This is where the carburetor would be on a normal car, this is this, what they call a supercharger, or a blower, depends on who you talk to. And then it's a four speed that goes on a 45 degree angle down to the differential. I think most of my subscribers are familiar with the GM engine layout. Might have a new guy get on. <laughs> Yeah, so there's the electric pot water heater. And the batteries are in here. Battery box, okay. Battery box. So these are your start batteries or you got your lithium? These are the start batteries. The lithiums okay. are under the floor. We'll have to take the floor apart to show you those. Uh oh. Couple batteries. Those aren't 8Ds, what are those? Just group 31s? Yeah, they're a little bit smaller. Yeah. They're about 150 bucks a piece rather than what, the $300 or whatever they are? Mm, yeah, it depends on where you get them and who you know. I don't, I don't spend that much on them. So, there's your hot water heater. Yeah, so here's the electric hot water heater. This is a plate exchanger. This is what exchanges the coach hot water or the generator hot water um, uh, throughout for the domestic. So this actually goes through here and heats this up. This is the little pump I was telling you about. It's a little solar powered pump, this little brass thing here, and there's a check valve so it can only go the one direction. So that's... Uh, this is this, on all the is time. It, is it 12 volt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little 12 volt pump. It runs all the time. Off right now. Okay, not much down here. Oh, well, well, that is that garbage. Pretty cool. So, um, I can't remember what size generator it is. It's a two cylinder Kubota engine. Uh, it's around a five to seven thousand watt generator diesel. Um, it has its own radiator here for cooling. It's on a thermostat, so once it knows that this is hot, it'll turn on. And it has two mufflers back to back that are going through each other because of the space to quiet it down. The diesel for the coach is right behind it, 140 gallons. And then this is a Hunter 
kind of like a Websco uh, hot water heater. I call it a hot water boiler. And it's a 40,000 BTU. And it will heat the generator up, or heat the engine up, or heat the domestic water up, or heat the radiators up to run through the coach to keep it warm. And is that then, running right now? No. Okay. What you hear running is that little white box. And there's another one right in front of it. You can't really see it very right good. There's salt water. There's salt water. Am I hitting the right thing? Is it down there? Is it down there? Yeah. boxes they pull eight amps a piece uh, so eight and eight is 16 amps and uh, their refrigeration uh, uh, for salt water you put salt water through it and then it drops the temperature of the salt water down so your salt water fish don't die and what I'm doing I'm running, the, I'm running the glycoline or the antifreeze through it and the antifreeze goes through there and it brings the temperature of it down and then I'm running it through the bus pulling that energy out, that coolness out to cool the bus. So I have two of them. They're in series with each other. So the water goes through one. And if the other one's running, it even gets colder steel. So 8 amps of 110. Yep. Yep. And I have them in two different phases. So like here at the campground, the, the load split. Yeah. That means we show that in there. Yeah. Can you run them off your inverters? One of them off I your inverter? run one off the inverter. How or long? I run them both off the generator. I don't know how long I've been In the sun, I've run them all day long. Really? Because i got a thousand watts up there. Yeah. That's interesting. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people are doing these split systems now. Yeah. And this sounds very unique. I've never heard of anything no, like no, that. No, I don't know if anyone's doing it. I don't know if anyone's doing it. Are they in this was, this was. Uh, those are way expensive. They're new. Very expensive. Very expensive. But I bought them on eBay. They were freight damaged and there was no Freon in them. So See. I had to repair the coils and recharge them. Yeah. So I got them for a song. I had to, it, it almost cost me more for shipping than it did to buy them. Because nobody wanted them. Nobody wants to repair them. The insurance company paid for the damage and he was just reselling them. Wow. So, yeah, they're uh, saltwater fish aquarium. I, 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 they're probably double what a you know a roof mount is or something like that. Okay. So but they... I just didn't want any roof penetrations except for my solar panels. And I didn't even want the solar panel penetrations, but So that is a cell antenna I'm seeing up there? Yeah. Yep. And I see a couple solar panels. Yeah, there's two on the other side too. Two on this side and two on that side they're offset. So I could put two thousand watts up there. But I only have a thousand watts. Yeah. Yeah, I like how they're not detracting from the lines of the bus. Yeah, you know, very low profile. A lot of people have got them up where they're really sticking up and yeah. Yeah. making the bus. Yeah, look different. I tried to keep them low, and I know they make some that shape with the bus line. I was going to do that. Okay, this is the original floor. This is when the stairs were, and I extended the deck over. And these are my lithium batteries. So I've got them on these big old plugs. You can unplug them while they're, while they're working. Put them in ammo boxes with little grommets. Oh, wow. There you go. Pretty simple. So what, what are these cells we're looking at here? So, um, they're, I have to get the information for you of what they actually are, but they're very, these little, uh, like you can see I've labeled them positive, negative, positive, negative, so I know how to put the straps on. Yep. Uh, and on the bottom there, it's even more simple. This is a little more jogged, jagged. Um, are these the... 18650 or no those are way bigger than that yeah. okay yeah these are these are uh, pretty known in the industry right now as a good storage battery you buy these from out of japan take quite a bit to or not japan china take quite a, a while to get them but uh 
once they're here, they're not too bad to put together. So, do you you not use a BMS on these? Nope. No I BMS. Nope. And is that is that okay? There's no no concern nope. with that. Not for me. There's not. But a lot of people do. But uh, there's a lot of people just building them this way. Wow. Yeah. And you can go to the expense of the others, and you're going to get uh, a better product, and you're going to know the condition of every cell, and it's going to know what to do to each cell to charge them. But to me, for the time and the effort, it was worth it. It's not. It's not worth it to me. I'm like, I'm not. I'm not dealing with it. Okay. So I, I didn't even go there. So how many volts is this pack that we're looking at here? It's 12 volts. It's basically. 12 volts. Okay. It's made as a 12. It's a little higher. It's like uh, uh, 13 something, and uh, you can charge them up to like uh, so much percentage over. Uh, this charger is made for it, and it goes to. Uh, 14, 4, 14, 2, somewhere in there for the charge circuit. So this guy's keeping track of what's going on here. How many of these ammo cans do you have? I have two. Just two. Yep. And how many amp hours is this guy? Um, I'll have to get that for you of what that is. I don't know. Okay. It was years ago, a couple years ago years. when I built them, right? I, yeah, I've lost track. Well, that's really cool, though. Yeah. So you see there's, just for protection in case something happens. Yeah, there's keep them in row place. Here. And it all just fits in the ammo box. Yeah, and that's why I bought this size ammo box, because it, it fit really well. And it's still fairly tight, you know. You try to get these big old wires in there and whatnot. They're, not, they're nothing to mess around with if you get a short, or one, like a normal battery. Oh, yeah. And these, yeah. yeah, you can put a wrench across this and it'll burn a wrench in half. Fire so, hazard, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, anyway. I can see why you put them in the ammo box. <laughs> right yeah, in case okay, something happens. That's right. You just don't know. Yep. And there it's an unknown. Boy, they're really compact. They don't take a lot of room. Yeah, do they they? Don't, you have to worry. And they're, they're light, you know, compared to a battery, they're pretty light. And that case weighs a little bit and it's yep. off the wire. Yep. But, uh, I had this in like this tonight. Okay. I think you had a turn 90, didn't you? Yeah, that. I can't remember which way I had that. So I could put a lot more in here, but it, I haven't done it yet. It looks like you got some cooling fans right there. So, is that part of your cooling system yeah, right there? So remember, I use the hot water. So this is the hot water or cold water. Fill this. That's cool. Yeah. So the cold water goes in the top. Hot water comes out the bottom. And i got two electric fans that are sucking in and then blowing up the side of the coach. It brings air in the back side here or in here. So it goes through and goes back up. It's cool. I can feel the cool air coming out oh, of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. 